Hello, this is KJ Lee with Crochet Basics, and in this episode, this is a, a three. It's not a three as in uh, learning-wise. <laughs> it's three as in the third project. I'm trying to use up this skein we, uh, Corona has hit, and uh, I've, it's a terrible thing where a bunch of us are quarantined and, you know, stuck home and, and not making the money and stuff. You know, it's a terrible, terrible thing. So, but let's a little sunshine and get, you know, learning a new hobby or just decorating the house or what have you. So, um, this is not necessarily a challenge for you. It's more of a challenge for me to get into my stash and, and start using it, you know. And so, uh, if you saw part one or, you know, challenge project one, project two, we made a washcloth. And we made a scrubby, a um, a shower, a shower flower, if you would, because uh, this does look like a flower, and I love this. This came out, it ca it was iffy, but it it came out pretty good. Second, you know, second time around, came out pretty good, and it's great. Pour your shower gel, and or it's cotton. You can use it on the dishes. You don't have to buy a sponge. You can use it on the dishes in the kitchen. And all that good stuff. So we like that because we can, it's cotton, we can throw it in the washer and boom, it's done and we love it. All right, so with that, this is a mat, a bath mat, but you can actually use it as a towel if you like. But at the end, I'm going to show you how to make it a, uh, a non slip mat. And that's a thing with yarn, uh, whether it's cotton, acrylic, whatever. When you make, uh, you know, this is going to be a bath mat for me. If you make it, uh, you know, you could use it as a towel if you don't put the slip grip, whatever. And um, perfect, you know. And you can also, you know, if you do in cotton, you can also do it as a runner in the hallway, what have you. Okay. So with that being said, I know I'm, I'm jabbering. I think the caffeine has kicked in. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, I'm going to, wait, I'm going to turn the page on my pattern here. And what you need, because I like to tell you, you need an H hook, which is a U.S. size H8, which is a 5.0 millimeter size hook. An I hook for the starting chain only, and that's a 5.5 millimeter size US size hook and this is 100% cotton it's peaches and cream I took the label off and uh, left it wherever I left it it's peaches and cream it's daisy ombre is what I'm using and it's a four ply uh, it's a worsted weight which means it's it's a heavy weight uh, yarn all right a yarn needle you can use um, the slip grip you can use latex they sell it, you can buy it at the craft store, order it, what have you. I am going to show you how to do it with uh, caulk. With, uh, I think it's silicone caulk. I don't have it in front of me, of course, because I wanted to get this going and I didn't pull out everything to get this going. A measuring tape is always welcomed when you're working with any any crafting supplies. I think a measuring tape is, is you want to have one handy just in case you're feeling a little iffy about your sizing. A yarn needle is, is a good thing too uh, for weaving in and such like that. A scissor, of course. You don't need a stitch marker for this one. Uh, we're just going to work it up and, and go. All right, so let's get that going. Third project for my yarn challenge that I'm doing, you know, challenging myself to get into my stash and use it and stop, uh, you know, overloading myself with more yarn that I have to hide from my husband. <laughs> All right, because one day he's going to find it. One day my husband is going to open up a door, a closet door or some kind of something. And dear Lord, dear Lord, this is an H hook like we've been using for the other projects and such. But for our starting chain, we're going to use uh, an, an eye hook. OK, we're going to use a, a five point millimeter I nine for the uh, starting chain. Now, um, a tip or a, you know, a side note, the reason we're going with a bigger hook is um, when you chain, you know, your tension is a certain way. 
when you're chaining. But then when you start working your first row of stitches, if your stitches are wide, like, you know, like a wrap stitch, a double crochet, a half double crochet, a triple crochet, what have you, um, it could make your crochet start to curl over. If you feel like it's going to curl up or whatever, always go like a hook size bigger, just for that starting chain. It, it, it'll make it lay flatter. Because your tension will be uh, like the stitch, the chain itself would be a little bit looser. All right, so I'm gonna chain 71. Now, if you do a slip knot, that's fine. I always tell you I don't. I do a little crossover on my hook. All right, so but for this, we're chaining uh, 71, and I'm chaining only chaining in my eye hook. Another side note or tip, what have you. If when you're uh, chaining, crocheting, whatever it is, with the hook, if it keeps pulling out where you're, you know, you're in the middle and it just poop, adjust your angle. All right, you might your angle might just be off on the hook, which kind of sounds maybe silly, but not really because if it keeps pulling out as you're working, like every stitch you pop out, every stitch you pop out, you know, then um, adjust the angle that you're holding the hook. So, wow, I'm loaded with tips today, boy. All right, <laughs> back to our chaining. Seventy-one. So that's seventy-one chains, and I'm switching to my H hook. All right. So you're gonna skip the first one closest to the hook, the first chain, and you're gonna work back in a uh, half double crochet. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Checking my pattern. All right. So you'll skip that first one, and you'll work back in a half double crochet. So you'll yarn over. You'll go through one side of the braid, you'll pull up a loop, then you'll pull through again, through all three. And you'll work this back and you should have 70 half double crochets. And, and again, you know, if you need help with pattern reading or different stitches, the, the, the earliest videos I have on my channel, I, I do show you how to read the pattern, um, what the abbreviations are because when I was learning to read patterns, I, I taught myself, there was a snowstorm coming, and I taught my, I said, all right, I picked out a pattern off of the internet, and I had my yarn and whatever, and a big snowstorm we were expecting. This is like forever ago. And I went to Blockbuster and <laughs> rented some movies. It actually wasn't that long ago, but you know, I, um, I had some movies I was going to watch, and I had my pattern picked out, and whatever. And it was like after midnight, you know, because that's the best time to watch horror movies, of course. So it was way late, and the pattern itself said TOG. And there was no no explanation, there was no key code or anything, and I, and I sat there and I said, what the heck is TOG? And then I, I looked at the clock and I said, well, I can't call my mom now. I said, it's way too late to call my mom um, to ask her what the heck TOG is. And there was nobody else to call because she, she would crochet with me, um, you know, all the time. So I just uh, was so confused, so confused. I called her the next day the next morning at, uh, like, way early. I was just like, Ma, what the heck is TOG? <laughs> and she was like, oh, my gosh, you know. She was good about it. She probably thought I must have hit my head or something. So, but you'll work this back till you get to your last chain, of course, and then you'll uh, chain one and turn your work. So I'm, I'm almost at my end right here. So um, the end of first row, row one. 
and you should have 70 stitches. So you'll chain one and you'll turn your work. And so now from here we're gonna work um a, uh we're gonna work I'm told it's called an up down stitch, but I don't know if this is the actual I've seen people do this stitch different ways. Uh just so you know, I've seen them work it up in one, you know, stitch or or you know, and uh, I don't know. But what you're going to do here, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to work a single crochet in the first stitch, and a double crochet in the next, and then a single. And you'll repeat that all the way down. So you're alternating each stitch, you're alternating a single crochet and a double crochet. And this is, I'm explaining it now if you didn't see the washcloth video that we made. Okay, so this is what it will look like uh, after a couple of rows are done. This is what it looks like. It's really, it's a nice textured, you know, it's a nice textured stitch. And I love it on, I love it in general, actually. Just, you know, because it, it makes you pay attention, I guess, when you're crocheting. But you'll work this back. You'll work this with the alternating um, a single crochet and a double crochet. Because the stitches alternate, you know, it makes the double crochet squish down a bit to, you know, to meet the, the single crochet, which gives it a nice uh, rippling effect, I think. All right, but you'll, you'll continue working this. And uh, I'm gonna shut up so that you could just, you know, uh, and move on. All right, and I'll meet you at the corner here. I'll meet you at the end of the row, and we'll work that out. Now, if you wanna go wider with this, you can. You can chain more and go wider if you like. Um, you can go as long as you like, as wide as you like, what have you. Just remember on the ends that you're only going to do a chain one, no matter what you end in or what you start in or whatever it, it you know whatever stitch it is double crochet or a single crochet you're only going to chain one don't chain any more than one on the ends of this because then it will get lopsided So if you haven't, please subscribe. Please, um, you know, give a thumbs up if you're digging on me or you're digging on the yarn projects and such. All right, so I'm coming up on my end right now. So I ended on a double crochet, so I chain one, turn work. All right, so what you're going to do is you're gonna work opposite what you just did and even if you're not really paying attention when you're crocheting <laughs> because you know got to catch up on our tv shows and such um what i do where it's you know pushed up more you'll do a single and where it dips down you'll do a double so here's my first one and you see this is lower this stitch is lower than this one next to it so i'll do my double and then a single. So you're working opposite when you work back and that evens out the the end product as far as the last row that that evens it out, you know, working, you know, it's up down up down up down. All right. So with that being said, um you will work as many rows as you like. And of course, I'll give you my row count and my final measurements and stuff like that. And you'll end off um and a half double crochet. So you'll see on the screen. I'll I always you know post put it on this put the titles on the screen, which is the pattern itself is on the screen, um, you know, along with the video. All right. So but you'll work back, and then what you're going to do is you're going to repeat this 
the, the you know, single, double, single, double, alternating, you're going to repeat row two and row three, more or less until you get the desired length you want. You know, um, this is this is an, uh, um, a you project. This is a me project. This is a you project. Like, so might as well, if you're stuck inside now, might as well beautify, you know, spice it up and whatever and everything, you know. And I, I do love, I love yellow in the bathroom. I love yellow in the kitchen, you know. It's just cheery. Yellow is just, you know, cheery and... And like I said, I mean, I bought this yarn. I can't tell you how long it's sitting in my stash. I know it's a really long time, like a couple of years, uh, more than a couple of years. But if I was so excited when I bought it, why haven't I done anything with it? And that's really the challenge itself. If you were so excited when you bought your fancy dancy yarn and whatever, what are you waiting for? The perfect project? That'll... That'll, that'll come and go. You can do the perfect project with any yarn. Let's air it out, you know. Let's get it going. <laughs> is, is more or less, you know. All right. So I will be back in a moment and um, show you mine. And if you like, I would love if you show me yours. You can always post on my Facebook fan page. I, I would love to see if you make any of my projects. Please post them. Post them to my fan page. It, it would thrill me. Like you wouldn't believe. Like I would do a little dance of joy. All right. All right. I will uh, have the pattern on the screen itself and the stuff you need and all that kind of thing. And then I'll show you how to do the, um, the slip grip on it is the main point of this one. Okay. And also to replace the mat that uh, went missing from my bathroom. Very, very uh, mysterious. <laughs> I think it went down to laundry and never came back. That happens. All right. So your piece should start to look like this one. If you didn't watch this video, that's okay. Maybe you will now, you know, maybe you'll, you'll see how cute and you'll be like, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to watch that video. All right. So I will be back in a moment when... So I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, Debbie from the Canadian Crocheter. She gave me a lovely shout out. Uh, she caught my flower shower video and... Um, she was real sweet. It was really, really nice of her to mention um, my channel in her video and my, my, my little flower in her video. You know, that, that was really nice of her. I very much appreciate it. But I think the best part of her shout out, which, which really made me happy, was um, she said, it's like you're sitting with a friend that's trying to show you something. And I, I really, I appreciate that more than anything because when I make these videos, I, I mean, I don't want you to feel like I'm some expert spouting out whatever. I, I want you to feel like I'm, I'm showing you something. This is something we can do together and learn together. And, and I throw in my, my silly stories or my funny jokes or whatever it is, you know, um, because, you know, we, we are friends. We're, we're, you know, we're stitching and chatting and all that, you know. So that really, I appreciate that very much. You can find her link down below. Check her out. She is, she's, she's a, a, a vlogger, a yarn influencer is what I'm going to go with. And she tells you, she shows you her worked up patterns. And she, she tells you who writes patterns that are like super easy to follow and that you, you know, like you're going to understand and, and, you know, just nice, you know, just really nice. I appreciate her very, very much in, in my head. I'm definitely friends with her. No, no doubt about it. Um, and with that, um, I finished my mat and I did about 83 rows. So with 83 rows of um, 70 stitches, works back and forth in the H hook, it came out to uh, 20 inches wide by 29 inches long. So that's really pretty good. I mean, as far as, you know, um, we're stepping out of a bathtub, not um, like a shower stall and uh, the size of your bathroom and all that kind of stuff. I was gonna do fringe on it, but then I figured, you know, with my leftover, I should do the um, swatches to, to try the slip grip. This is what I had left. 
as far as my, my cone, this little tiny bit. So I'm pretty thrilled in general that I got a cone gone, you know? And this bit here uh, will end up uh, probably a stitch marker for when I'm working. So that worked out perfect, I think, as far as, um, you know, get, I got three nice projects out of one pound and um, my bathroom will be, will be uh, a lot prettier for it. <laughs> so now just to uh, show you, with the slip grip or what have you that I was going to show you, um, I used two different just to try out because I'm fun that way. All right, so I used the Loctite. Um, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say the name or not. All right, but a multi-purpose, all-purpose uh, stuff you can use uh, on tiles and things of that nature to seal up. And just a, this one is a clear, transparent one. And it comes out white, which is great, but it comes out very thick. I mean, you know, we can um, push it into the fabric, but you don't really want to do, you know, push it in too hard. You don't want it to come out the other side, as far as this is concerned, you know, because, and you also want to protect your surface. If you, um, if it's more loose, liquidy, what have you, you want to protect um, your underneath. So something like a parchment paper might be good for this to you know protect and this goes on white and it it dries um, clear pretty much so just to show you all right so this comes out like a paste this is hard because the camera's facing me so all right and with this I would just um, not going to uh, sm like smash it in, like I'm not going to drive it through the fabric, but just to uh, kind of smear it on and get a thinner coat. And then when it's dry, completely dry, it, it dries clear, as far as I can tell. And it gets messy. So I know, I'm always showing you something wacky. And this is one of those wackies. And we're not gluing this, you know, we're not gluing this to the floor. We're putting the, um, we're putting it on, and then once it dries, it becomes a non-slip um, situation. <laughs> okay, and then also, what I did was, this was one of the swatches, and I used um, the, they call it, um, I've heard it called puff paint. And it's dimensional fabric paint. And it comes in a tube, a little puff bottle and such. So um, with that, you want to, you know, test it on something. You want a similar color to what you're using with because this does not dry clear. All right, and with that, you would just, you know, uh, make sure you get it, you know, decent coverage, what have you. And just to show you um, in not a clear color or what have you. I know, I show you the weirdest things, I think. But just to get it around the edges, you know, it doesn't have to be completely covered or anything like that. But, you know, and as it dries, it'll uh, adhere better to the fabric itself, to the yarn, and um, uh, smooth out somewhat. It's not going to lay totally flat. Okay, so I did the vinyl stuff, and I did the, um, the fabric stuff. All right, and I also found 
uh, vinyl adhesive cork. Do it all. Bonds, cork, seals. Okay, and a cork gun because you need both when you do that. But they do smell, uh, smell. <laughs> they do sound. <laughs> yeah, all right. They do, <laughs> sorry, no, I can't recover. Okay, but they, I know they sell smaller than a full size. All right, for smaller jobs and stuff. So I gave myself a quick little lesson in the caulking, the gun, working the gun. All right, so I wanted to try that out also, the cork. And it comes out pretty thick, just like the adhesive, but you get a nice continuous line. And you don't wanna make a mess with this and all of that. All right. So funny. So just to try that one out too, because I wanted to use the regular cork and not uh, the adhesive stuff. I know I'm speaking a little, uh, I'm trying to project my voice to the camera here. All right, so, and then just, uh, if you can get a nice bond to it. Not, not, you're just pressing it in. You're not uh, smashing it through. You're not, um, you know, trying to get it to come out through the material or the fabric or whatever. But this is gonna dry white, the, um, the cork. I already know that's gonna dry white. So, give it a shot. And the cork, uh, the back of the cork container dispenser, whatever you want to say. It says to let it dry for at least two hours, depending on, you know, your humidity and stuff and, and cool and humidity and everything. But at least two hours before painting with a latex or an oil-based paint. So it must dry quicker. I know whenever my husband has to do any like caulking in the bathroom or whatever it is, uh, he doesn't let us into the bathroom for, uh, I think about 24 hours or so. Something to that effect. You know, he doesn't, uh, want it to get wet and stuff like that. So, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see. So with that, uh, I'm gonna let this sit nice and flat overnight, um, undisturbed and what have you, and let it dry and I'll give you my review, tell you what's what um, in the morning. So we'll just go from there. And I'm hoping to have this video up by, uh, I thought I'd have it up already, considering. but. We'll let that dry, and then I'll show you close-ups and all that good stuff, okay? So I thought I was gonna go with the fabric paint, because this has been drying for days, and it's still sticky to the touch. Um, the adhesive, whatever, the uh, sealant, uh, sealant two-in-one stuff. And But I realized the fabric, it dries kind of like a plasticky, it doesn't have the grip. It definitely does not have the grip. You are gonna bust your bumper if you go sliding on this. It's not, no, <laughs> that's a no. With the fabric, the dimensional paint. It's, you know, none of these things are meant for what I'm trying to use them for, I guess. But, you know, in a pinch, I guess. So, um, in a pinch, <laughs> if you can't get a hold of the latex, non-slip grip, what have you, and say like companies coming and such in a couple of days or whatever it is. I would say the two-in-one adhesive, it, it dries, uh, it doesn't completely dry. It's a little sticky, but it's almost like um, keeping it in place, I guess, if you will. You know, even though it's sticky on the bottom, it's, it's not sticky where it's going to mess up your tile. Like, definitely not. And the, the vinyl, um, very similar, but dried completely. It's not sticky, the, the vinyl um, cork that I showed you in the end. Also, with the vinyl cork, it, like it, the way it dried, it holds it together. Like, it, it makes the mat itself... Um, a little more rigid, considering it's crocheted uh, cotton yarn. You know, it, it seems to make it like a little more rigid where it's not 
um, pulling all over the place and stuff like that. You know, it, it more or less sealed the, the stitches, the, you know, the way it is, you know? So these I'll probably use as coasters or something, really. You know, they're, they're kind of coaster sized. And then I have a stash video coming. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, I'm going to show you my stash, as much of it as I can, and give you tips and tricks on storing your stash and, and keeping it, you know, fresh and smelling fresh and, and you know, all that good stuff, right? So um, I guess with that, I'm going to say happy hooking, as always, because it keeps you off the streets, keeps you out of trouble, looking super cool to all your friends. And um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'm, I'm here. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, um, DeviantArt, all, um, all the good stuff. Pinterest, I think I'm on. <laughs> I forget sometimes. All right. And I will be back really soon with a new tutorial, something, something uh, fun, I guess. Take care. I hope you're all safe and well and, uh, you know, trying to get some fresh air and all that good stuff. And I'll be back real soon. Crochet Basics, Kay Jolie. Bye.